much. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Sam and Nards. Mm -hmm. Sorry for our MIA, it's been a very, very, very scary couple of weeks actually. It has been really bad. Unfortunately, Sam and I got dun dun dun. The coronavirus. The coronavirus. It certainly was no joke. Um, it ain't a joke, it's real. Um, we underestimated it big time. We uh, did. We were pretty naive here in LA, went out to an event. I think we got it at a house party or a gathering. Who knows? Um, but we did go to Facebook, we did go to Instagram and asked if you guys wanted to hear more about our experiences, what we learned along the way, the symptoms that we struggled with, what are the things that we you can look out for. We got so many questions. Yeah. I mean, there are, it went on and on and on. And I think it's because the media puts it out there as a death sentence. I mean, you really only hear the horror stories of it, but every, do you ever just meet someone and talk to someone who goes, oh yeah, I had the coronavirus and I made it through yeah. the coronavirus. It's, very, it's rare. very rare or they don't want to open up about it because there's such a stigma around it, which we can talk about later. Yeah. But and while, while there's a lot of people out there that are, you know, and God forbid, and we're very lucky to still be here to mm -hmm. share, share our story, our case didn't probably escalate to a point where, you know, it was a life or death situation, luckily right. enough for us. But there are a lot of people out there that have lost their lives from this, who are struggling with it right now as we're filming this this episode on our YouTube channel. So we are thinking of you. Um, for everyone out there who's lost someone, uh, we're thinking of you, our thoughts and prayers are with you as well. So d don't ever underestimate how serious this virus is. Um, scariest experience of my life, uh, um, both mentally and physically. And I think the one thing that Sam and I really wanted to do was instead of being ashamed, oh, we have coronavirus, don't tell people there's going to be, we wanted to use our platform to bring awareness to it, um, the seriousness of it, what we went through personally, and hopefully we can inspire you guys to follow the health regulations, really be careful, don't be naive and ignorant like us. We were like, what's a coronavirus? You know, I remember firsthand the experience before having coronavirus. Um, going, oh, it's just a virus, I'm sure I'll be fine, I'll be just like the flu. I was very, very wrong, and this virus is very different than the flu. Um, it's extremely severe, and uh, yeah, looking forward to sharing with you guys what we learned along our journey. Yeah, so we're gonna go through all of our questions. Hopefully we can answer. If you have any questions, ask below, and we will comment with our answers. Um, but everyone's experience is different, so please take that into consideration. We don't have all the answers. This is still as new to us as it is to the CDC. So hopefully you enjoy this episode and you can learn something from it. And wear your masks and wash your hands, but we'll share all that with you guys throughout the next few minutes. And um, hopefully you can walk away with some little nuggets of wisdom. Let's do it. Question number one is, and a lot of people ask this question, how do you think you got it? We live in the hot spot of the freaking world, y'all. We live in West Hollywood. I mean, the minute you walk outside, you're exposed. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one. I mean, we could have picked it up from anywhere. The coronavirus is extremely contagious. Um, but looking back at it, we were, we got a little careless and comfortable at night that we ended up venturing out when LA opened, and maybe that's where we got it. You know, we didn't wear masks when we probably normally would have and should have. Um, and it just takes one little careless move like that. And, underestimating it where you can you can pick it up wipe your nose cough lick it or whatever it was you can walk into a sneeze yeah. so anyways we were not as careful as we should have been we got excited once quarantine started to open up a bit and that weekend we went out is the week after we woke up with the symptoms point point of this being is be safe and don't underestimate and be naive to this because it's we were and it it's crazy us. and the symptoms is probably a question everybody asks mm -hmm. and that is something we want to share with you guys because both Nadia and myself experienced it kind of a little very similar but also very different yeah um how did your your symptoms start Naz? yeah so what were my first symptoms i woke up and I was feeling kind of icky. I went to bed the night before that thinking it was PMS because I was supposed to start my period, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I had a horrible back pain. Like it felt like I was getting a spinal tap and I was so confused and I was like, Ugh. And then the next morning I woke up 
and I had 102 fever. I had those body aches all over. That lasted me a good three days, the body ache and the fever. Um, I got that really, really bad. So my symptoms started a little later than Nards's. I started with um, a pretty bad fever, but then it sort of escalated into more severe headaches. I don't get headaches at even the worst of times. And my headaches sort of felt like I'd had uh, three dollar or the think of the cheapest red wine you could possibly drink having We've about 15 there. glasses um, and my headache was just thumping and then I would get back pains and body aches and pains and the probably the most severe ones was my lower back I almost felt like I had a little knife being shoved into my lower back or my kidneys that was a very similar and it was excruciating like you couldn't move you're like immobilized mm -hmm. and then out of nowhere it'd sort of loosen up and you'd sort of gain optimism and start feeling all right and then something else would happen um, and that sort of carried on for, for the most part of three or four days between mm -hmm. sweats, headaches, fevers, fever, body aches, and then loss of appetite. Nards lost her appetite really bad. Horrifically. And it's crappy because it is something that I struggled with. I'm very open about my story of anorexia and stuff. And one of the symptoms of freaking Corona is anorexia in the way of you have no appetite. And no matter what I did from the moment I woke up to the minute I went to bed, I had to force feed myself for maybe nine days. No, no. Yeah, my, mine was sort of a little different and similar to that in the mm -hmm. way that I didn't really have an appetite, but I lost complete smell and taste. So and when scary. I say that, I mean completely. You could have um, poured a, a surprise dish of dog shit, excuse <laughs> my language, and I wouldn't have smelt it, nor would I have tasted it. And, and, and I reckon I'm still only at about 70, 75%. Um, of that right currently now while we're filming this so and we're on day 16 yeah. so the symptoms still are lingering yeah. but not at the extreme yeah really. and a lot of people think you hear it all the time in the news and whatever you believe is whatever but it's like the flu it's not like the flu i can tell you right now it's for me this is this is 10 times worse than the flu yeah. the symptoms are more severe they're more protruding they're more persistent this thing this wouldn't go away and when you, sometimes you think you're in the clear and you think that you've reached, you know, the climax point, it's all, you know, downhill from there still. And then it will come back when you start feeling good. And, um, you know, day six for me, and I think, no, oh. it's, it's a, honestly, we're the, one of the, the scariest worst days, worst of, our days of our lives. Honestly, I, I thought we were going to end up in the hospital. Like I was getting mm -hmm. blurred vision, um, dizziness, shortness of breath. And, and just so and lethargic. It was so weird on that day for some reason, like, our body aches were at the extreme of the extreme. We could not even move, get out of bed. We tried to go just like get a little bit of sunshine, just a little bit of a walk. And it had us laying on the hardwood floor, both of us in tears going, what are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. Like it was just so genuinely painful. Sam and I were so blessed enough to not have any respiratory issues. I mean, there was just a little bit of shortness of breath, but we did not get a cough. We did not get any of that. It was just being lethargic for 12 days. Yeah, of just having zero energy, no motivation, and then nothing. obviously just feeling you know, in amongst all the anxiety and panic that already probably exists more so that's heightened in this area in particular mm -hmm. here in Los Angeles. Um, and then knowing that you've got coronavirus or COVID-19 mm -hmm. and not knowing the actual outcomes and how your body's gonna react to it, I think is scary in itself. And I think mm -hmm. that really heightened the, the, the emotions in this household between Nards. I mean, what I am very lucky to experience is this with Nards. I think going through this alone um, and people who have experienced this alone, it'd be, it'd be so hard because we, we both had each other yeah. to talk to, even though we both weren't feeling good at I all. I know, yeah. And you hear how, you know, this disease has taken such a toll on the world mentally, like with mental health and we experienced that to a different degree because the one thing I will say, which was like the worst part of this virus for me, it has such a stigma around it and people don't like mm -hmm. to talk about it. And we felt so alone. We had each other and we were so grateful that we had each other in that moment because I don't know what I would do without him. It's or... got this stigma around it. Like, yeah. No one wants it's to like be around you. like if you've got you. coronavirus, you're like this walking... Leper. Yeah, it's, you're, you're a like leper. this walking virus and you're like going to kill someone and... This is this is very serious. I mean, it is the symptoms serious. that we experienced, and we're very healthy, very fit. Pride myself on running and keeping. You know, you know, exercise is, yeah. is something I do every single day, and this thing rocked me in so many more ways than I could ever imagine. And um, 
I'm 32 years of age and I, I reckon I underestimated it fully, hey. I really did. And so, yeah, I think you guys just really need to really need to learn and, and be open-minded and, and be vigilant with this because, you yeah. know, there, there are young people dying from all over the world. Absolutely. And, of course, you're going to see only horror stories on the media, which is why we're here to talk about it. But, truthfully, it's not a joke. It's not something to mess around with. Really be careful. Don't think you're stronger than it because, I mean... 24 healthy rocks. Well, let, let, let's let's now talk about what test did we get. Now, you've probably heard there's two tests that you can get right now for COVID-19 uh, to detect if you've got it. Oh. There's the nostril one, which Nards tells me, and she makes me just so scared of it. <laughs> it's like this thing goes up your nose and it hits your brain. And that's it just gross no, and ridiculous. No. Or you can get the mouth swab. And um, we've got a lot of questions come through which test did we get that identified that we were both positive to COVID-19 and you it was that. at Dodger Stadium and I made sure going into there was like ain't no one sticking nothing up my nose so we found the one place <laughs> that was the oral test and we had to cough five times you get in the car it was like a two-hour line I mean I don't I'm just being honest I don't recommend going to Dodger Stadium it is madness um but you go there you wait they give you the swab and then in the car you cough five times <coughs> like ridiculously and then you rub on your top of your mouth the bottom of your mouth the sides of your mouth under your tongue stick in a little potion and then a day later or two days later you find out your results we did that on a friday found out saturday yeah. and that was such and a then sad it day. was almost like for us we ticked every box right yeah yep, you've got COVID. yep you've got COVID. every symptom we, we had every experience right um, yeah. Except the respiratory problems from a from a, an extreme point of view. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost for me. It felt like a relief knowing that I actually had it because I was worried that if I didn't actually have COVID what the heck morning, was happening? What was us? it happening to my body? Yeah. So I think getting that 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 test saying positive for us was was a more. It was a relief at the same time. I felt like a lot of panic and anxiety still. But one of the biggest takeaways, Nards, and you probably agree with this, is especially now in this time that we all find ourselves in is try and limit the intake of news and yeah. media because when we when we knew we had coronavirus and we knew that we'd been um we tested positive for COVID-19 in the news is nothing but people dying and oh. all the, the, the most severe outcomes from this case and how many people a day are diagnosed or got the virus or how many people have dropped dead and the died and it's sad it's overwhelming it and is overwhelming and it's it's that real me, yeah that meant that that mental struggle and that mental burden that i know i personally struggled with over probably the last two weeks probably more than the illness itself was was very hard it was very hard and um yeah like i i struggle i'm struggling still a little bit with it all yeah. you know like the panic and the anxiety and i and this is what i do for work this is what i do for my life it was very difficult and the panic did take a huge toll on the both of us we are two healthy hypochondriacs so <laughs> yeah the worst thing we did was to go on google because then we'd read these stories and sam was like oh my god this person didn't get their taste back or their smell back we're not gonna get ours back i was like oh my gosh you see this person dropped it it's terrible and a lot of them are true real stories but at this point in time god was in control and it's all we had we just had to go okay we're gonna take matters into our own hands trust in god be okay pray about it my dad prayed for me every night so did my mom over the phone for the both of us and and just focus on what we could control, which was the circumstances we had in front of us, the symptoms we had, and take it day by day. Do not dig into the media about it. Just focus on healing, sleeping, relaxing, and that's how you're going to get better. Is mm. I mean, the CDC tells you, but what are, how do you cure it? They said rest, hydration, and Tylenol. I'm like, yeah. thanks. Okay, I, I have this scary disease and I get told just have some Tylenol. It is tough because you're, you're sort of there to fend for yourself, but just know that if you're experiencing this or you know someone that's experiencing it, just try and be there for them, try yeah. and check in on them from time to time because, you know, out of all of this, one thing I've certainly learned and um, I think a lot of other people who's probably experienced it have learned is you feel very alone. Uh, um, no one, so people alone. try and distance themselves from people who are struggling with it i think to a degree because they're worried they might get it 
it's got this stigma. It's really weird. But where's um, the emotional check in? Yeah, I mean, my stuff. my real friends showed up in this time and went, "Is there anything I can do?" I had one of my friends who was so amazing bring me casseroles, Olivia Big Jordan. Big shout out to Olivia Jordan. Gosh, absolute jam. But to everyone else too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But well, I just want to like shine light on someone. If you know someone, I know that if I have a friend now who gets it, I want to be a helping hand. Sam and I lived off of Postmates for days because we couldn't get the strength to go into the kitchen and cook a meal. And no. Olivia Jordan brought us casseroles and pasta and it was it was so beautiful. So if you do know someone who has it, obviously don't go hang out on their couch, but be there for them. Text mm. them. All we could do is be on our phones and just sit here going, oh, I wish we didn't feel so alone. Yeah. Be there for someone. Yeah, but, but definitely be there for someone. Try and support them. But I think, um, I think the biggest takeaway from getting coronavirus is it's real. Mm. It's definitely out there. It really does exist. It's not. A, it's not just this. This hot topic at the moment that people are talking about. Like we actually had it. Nadia yeah. and I both actually had it. Um, and I wouldn't wish it on anybody. And I can only only get a glimpse as to what this might feel and be like for someone maybe less fortunate than no, us, older. older, that might have underlying health problems. Like this is why, you know, thousands and thousands of people have died from this. Yeah. You know, it's 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 the real deal. It's legit. I wouldn't wish it on nobody my worst um, enemy i yeah. still wish they don't have it <laughs> and just um practice a lot of a lot of lot of self-care make sure you're wearing a mask um i think a mask definitely helps um wash your hands wash them often and wash them regularly and um just try and remain calm i think something i learned through this i was a bit panicked nadia had to put me in the shower at one stage because i oh. thought i was gonna have a heart attack it's really really so. scary you guys and it like makes me emotional because it's just like we didn't know what was happening to us. We didn't know what the outcome was going to be. Like the panic was our worst symptom. Like, yeah, we had horrible fevers. Yeah, we had body aches, but the panic and the fear of the unknown because doctors can't even give us an answer, it wrecked us. Mm. So I just highly recommend finding your peace within it. If you are going through it, don't compare yourself to the worst case scenario. Don't find, go on Google. Yeah, and then find some a partner. I had a partner to go through it with. That doesn't mean go get your best friend set, sick. It means just find someone that you can talk to about it, who's not gonna hold that stigma, who's gonna check in on you every day. And I mean, it was a blessing because we were able to be so close with our close, like our, mm. our family and our loved ones were so constant in checking in, mm. be there for those people that do have it. And don't treat us like we're some crazy monsters. A question that came through often was, you know, what are you doing um, to get through it health-wise? Like, what are you eating? How are you nurturing your body? And what are you doing? For, for me, um, eating healthy stuff, you know, hot soups, lemon, ginger teas, the beautiful Nadia <laughs> made almost every other day when she could get up and make it. This was my cure really quick. If you do have any respiratory problems or just feel awful, you need things that are easy to digest. So I would boil a pot of water. I would shave some fresh ginger. I'd get the stuff off it and I'd cut it up. I'd squeeze a lemon. I'd put the lemon rind in it and I'd put a little bit of apple cider vinegar and I'd let that boil super hot. We had that all the time and it just felt that was like our, our NyQuil, like our way of just like putting yeah. medicine into Cr our body. Crushed vitamin C's every day. Zinc. Had, 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 had zinc when it, vitamin when it was Vitamin D yes, and C. Yep. And then... What we did have, um, Such a brat. what we what we did have a lot of was uh, just healthy foods as best as we could. Even though we we're ordering online, we just tried to keep it really clean mm -hmm. um, and tried to maintain eating habits because, like we said earlier, you sort of lose appetite and then you forget that you haven't eaten in eight to ten hours. It's not really healthy for you. So I really think good. it's important to try and stay stay that in that routine, stay healthy, stay off the news. And try and remain calm. But th those teas that Nadia was cooking almost every day was a, was a game changer. I think at the end of this whole story, what we've really learned is compassion, um, being able to share how you really feel with each other and knowing that you're not alone during this time. You know, this has been a tough time for, for us and we pride ourselves on our mental strength and, and getting through things. But this has been a real test and um, probably one of the greatest tests of my life, especially being in a different country, not my home country. And surrounded by different systems and processes and it's been a real challenge but NIDS has certainly helped and um, I'm very grateful to have gone through this experience so that we can help educate you guys through this channel. Yeah and we don't have all the answers like I said I think after this me at least I want to help in a way that I can. I have a friend who's donating plasma which is helping 
find a curing a case for it. So I'm going to go donate my old COVID plasma to make sure that I'm at least able to be a helping hand in this. Um, Practice social distancing, but stay socially connected. So speak to people, speak to people often, wear a mask as often as you can. Wash your um, hands. Wash your hands very, very Hand regularly. sanitizer. Keep hand that. Hand sanitizer. You're uh -huh. better off being overcautious and undercautious yes. because you really don't want this. But you, you also can't live in fear. Don't the live in fear. People who like aren't leaving their house and genuinely are like mortified to go yeah. out into the public. It's very important. You're the reason that we, there's this stigma happening and making us feel so pariah and icky. So I'm just saying, don't fear the world, but be be careful. Be, be kind. Cautious. That's be all kind. There is. Show be kind. love. Be love and support people who might be going through it or their loved ones because this real is as i mentioned earlier it's a real deal it's legit it's something not to be fucked with so that's about it <laughs> i'm like the f word we're, we're back we're back better than ever we got um, those antibodies now and i i actually don't know if you can get corona again that's something that someone can. again we've read too, way too much google the so. world is well, unknown yeah well this oh, is all unknown um we're looking forward to you being back on here and we look forward to bringing the next episode out on Sam and Nards on our YouTube channel. Yes. Amazing. Maybe it might be Nards showing us her cooking skills because one thing <laughs> I've noticed in this last couple of weeks, Nards has been glued to a, ta uh, a show on Netflix called Open Table. No. Or the Final Table. The Final Table. The you final guys, table. watch the Final Table. It's amazing. Point is, I found my passions in Corona and I'm cooking up a beautiful meatloaf so that what do you reckon ne ne to. next next episodes on nards and her cooking regime i reckon over a good solid day oh i reckon God. she's really really um experienced at it i would say and she's very passionate which makes her even better at it so oh, thanks. much love guys look after yourself from both of us here in our humble abode in our apartment in west hollywood much love we love you guys so much stay safe know it's real be good, and we're praying for each and every one of you. Love y'all. Love the southern accent. <laughs> <laughs>